So Kepler discovered that planets sweep out equal areas and equal times, just like it's shown here. The, so the planet has taken the same amount of time to go from one of these points to the next, uh, corresponding to one of the uh, areas here, uh, sectors, and then also the same amount of time the other for the other ones. So which means that the planet has to go faster to closer this to the sun to cover the same area in the same time, for instance. Well, in any case, Newton proved this in the Principia in his great masterpiece. And is in fact is the very first proposition of this work. So Newton put it at the, the very front to showcase his uh, his method, and indeed it is a very beautiful uh, proof that he has. So no wonder he put it straight up front. Let's look at Newton's proof. Here, consider the following: here we have the sun at the center here, uh, going to exert a uh, gravitational influence on the planet, which is this white dot that's been the planet here. And I am picturing now with this little stopwatch I'm saying that uh, an infinitesimal amount of time dt has passed between these two positions so this that amount of time past the planet went from the bottom position here to the top one okay now uh, let an equal amount of time pass again then if there was no gravity the planet would just keep on going this is the law of inertia if there is no force acting on the object, it just keeps on going. Same direction, same velocity, it just keeps going. Uh, so you have the blue and the uh, yellow here being equal uh, pieces, equally directed. So that's if there is no gravity. But note, in that case, certainly then you would have Kepler's law, which is equal areas and equal times, because you see how the two, uh, you these two areas are going to be the same, because the two base lengths, the yellow and the blue, a chunk there are equal the two bases and furthermore they have the same uh, height which is the perpendicular height from there from the base up to the to the top which is the sun so they clearly are have the same area there so that, okay that's Kepler's law uh, you know would be true if there was no gravity what if there is gravity then let's see what happens then you have uh, the planet uh, deviating from its uh, inertial path obviously being pulled toward the sun and that's what indicated here with this red line if there's gravity it's being uh, deflected in that direction obviously and I say that in fact uh, the the direction in which the planet is deflected is parallel to the, uh, the this this other uh, pink line with the arrows that I have indicated here so that is to say because we have uh, cut the time intervals into such small pieces, dt is infinitely small piece of time, so to speak. Because of that, gravity has no time to change direction from the beginning of this second time interval to the end of it. And therefore, the direction in which the planet is moved to toward the sun is in fact parallel to the direction in which uh, the uh, gravitational pull of the sun was pointing also at the beginning of the time interval and at the end of the time interval, those may be considered the same because the uh, time uh, interval is infinitely small. So therefore you have this these two parallels as illustrated here, which means though that these two areas are the same, the red one and the blue one have the same area because they have the same base, which is the, uh, the pink base here uh, going from the middle position of the planet to the sun they share that base and then they have the same height because they both have the same perpendicular height between these two parallels they both end at the same the top vertex is at the same parallel to the base so therefore the same area so th uh, those areas are the same but you remember the blue area was the same as the yellow we previously established so therefore the red and the yellow are also the same which is exactly what we needed to show namely that in one infinitely small time interval here the yellow one it covers a certain area in the next equal time interval it covers the same area again meaning it has not uh, it, it, oh, it, it slows down or or been speeding up in terms of how the, it, the rate at which it's covering area rather it covers the same area in the same uh, instance of time so uh, that's uh, a very neat geometrical proof then of Kepler's law of equal areas and is an indication of the kind of the style of Newton's Principia, the greatest you know masterpiece in the history of science uh, one could argue and that uh, you know
know, you can see that this, uh, this kind of reasoning is uh, calculus-like, so to speak. I, it's like the calculus in that it uses infinitely small, it causes an infinitely small and uses the idea of approximating a curve by essentially s little line segments, like the orbit of the uh, uh, planet here can be split into little uh, triangles and that the orbits you know, may be considered straight in these small pieces and so on. This is kind of a calculus type reasoning. But on the other hand, it also doesn't use any formulas of any kind. It's purely geometrical. So in that sense, it's different from the modern calculus or different from the kinds of proof you would find in a modern book of this result. So, well, it's very uh, uh, beautiful, though, to reflect on uh, this, this phenomena. So note also another interesting corollary of this reasoning is that uh, uh, it doesn't matter how strong the force of gravity is. Of course, Newton himself later established that the force of gravity is like the inverse square of the distance. However, note that this proof goes through no matter how uh, strong the force of gravity is, as long as the this red area, uh, you know, if, y if I took the little white dot at the top of this red area, I, I could slide it however I like along this uh, pink parallel here and it would the area would remain the same so even if the gravity was twice as strong or, or uh, weaker it doesn't matter the area remains the same so it's a um, the only requirement is that the force is directed centrally it's toward the middle toward the Sun and that is the uh, indeed also what's it what Newton uh, how Newton presents it so uh, many interesting uh, it's remarkable how such Powerful insights can be reached on the basis of such extremely uh, elementary geometrical reasoning, I find, so food for thought.